Father, we thank you for your spirit. We thank you for your word. And we thank you for your servant you have brought to us this evening. To take us in your presence. We thank you for the life of every, every brother and sister in this room. May your name be glorified. May your name be lifted. In Jesus' glorious name. And someone says, Amen. Hallelujah. I know you can still do much better than that when you clap for Jesus. Oh my God. Oh my God. Romans chapter 1. We were there yesterday as we introduced our great subject of holiness focusing on the spirit of holiness. And I want us to read verse 3 and verse 4. Verse 4 says, And he was declared to be son, to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness of me the spirit of holiness but the resurrection from the dead yesterday i wanted to show us why we need to live holy. In John chapter 14, verse 30, the Lord Jesus says something important. The rule of this world is coming. And he says, he has nothing in me. Notice this one. He said, I will no longer talk much with you because the ruler of this world is coming. Satan is coming. He said, and I will no longer talk much with you. But what is beautiful, he said, that Satan, that ruler, in me, he has nothing. In other words, if the enemy comes and finds something of his, inside of you, that gives him a right of access. Paul writes to the Ephesians, he says, be angry, but do not sin. Don't allow the sun to go down on your wrath. And the next verse says, Ephesians 4, 26, now 27, it says, and give no foothold, give no place to the devil. When a believer practices sin, he gives place, access to the devil. I will start tonight explaining to us holiness. But before we go there, let me talk to my brothers and sisters who serve God in whatever capacity. I know you want more of God. I want you to look at 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 20 and then 21. Very powerful. Something glorious is about to happen tonight in your life. Knowing first that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation for prophecy never came by the will of man. Never. Prophecy came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke 
as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. For you to be used, you must be moved by the Holy Spirit. But for the Holy Spirit to move you, to use you, to speak for him, to bring healing, deliverance, transformation, and salvation in his name. Listen what the Bible says. You must be holy. Holy man of God. You can be man of God, but not holy man of God. You will understand that in our time, most ministers of God, brothers, apostles, pastors, we call them men of God. Not because they are men of God. It has become a way of talking. But what makes a real man of God is his ability to stand constantly in the presence of God. That's why in the Bible, it's not every person who is called a man of God. The few times people were called holy man of God. You will see these were not common men. Because when you are not only a man of God, but you are a holy man of God. The movement of the spirit of God. Only you to help God's people will not be ordinary. I pray that God gives you understanding. You can take your time, go and read your Bible. Probably you will not find more than four times, four times in the Bible, a servant of God was called holy man of God. And I will show you two who were really called holy men of God. And you will see straight away that they were not like other prophets, like, like other pastors, like other apostles. Two. One in the Old Testament, one in the New Testament. And straight away you will see that they are not from a common race of men. Holiness will distinguish you. From anybody. You see, the world can manipulate things, but you cannot manipulate the Spirit of God. There is a servant of God in the Bible called Elisha. You know Elisha? The one who became the successor of Elijah. When you go to the book of 2 Kings, chapter 4. The woman of Shunem, verse 9, she said to her husband, Look now, I know that this is a holy man of God who passes by regularly. The woman said, I know. Are you following me? She's telling her husband, I know this man. I have observed him. He passes here to go to the mountain to pray. We bring him in our house. He eats food. I have observed him. I know he's not only a man of God. He is a holy man of God. This holy man of God as you see here, Elisha became successor to Elijah and received double portion of the spirit of Elijah, not by accident. I know you may not understand. Let me break down a little bit. Do you know that when Elijah went to God, he said, I want to die. God said, I will give you a prophet. Go and anoint a prophet. He said, anoint Elisha, the son of Shabbat. Are you aware, man of God, most people don't realize that Elijah used to have another servant. In 1 Kings chapter 19, when he was running from Jezebel, he left that servant at Beersheba. Elijah was like a senior me. 
minister of his time. And he had many schools of prophets. In Gilgal, in Bethel, in Jericho. There were many prophets. And Elisha was not one of them. Elisha was a businessman. God left religious people. Yet, people were prophet by profession. He left them. He went to pick a farmer in his business. What do you think attracted? God pushed God to leave all the men. And to go and find this man is holy living. Holy living. Let, let me show something. One day, Elisha was on the mountain. Gehazi's servant was with him. The woman of Shunem lost the baby. She was coming with grief. She wanted to touch his feet. Bow him and touch her feet. You read the Bible what Gehazi did. Came to push her away. Literally, you cannot even touch the feet of this holy man of God. The servant knew his boss very well. This man, when it came to miraculous... If you respect Elijah for the seven major miracles, this Elisha here, he died after performing 13 major miracles. When he died, one miracle was missing because of the double portion of the spirit. His bones had to resurrect the 14 person. If you respect Elijah, then you must even more respect his son Elisha. He's one of the rare people in the Bible that scripture called holy man. I'll give you a second one in the New Testament. And this man is called John the Baptist. Mark chapter 6 verse 20. Thank you, Spirit of God. The Bible says, For he wrote, Fiat John. Are you with me? Are you sure you're with me? <laughs> he wrote, did what? Fiat John. The king is afraid of a pastor. Today, politicians are not afraid of men of God. You know why they are not afraid of them? They have girlfriends, you also have girlfriends. They drink and they get drunk, you also drink and get drunk. Some of them, they do some with government money, not all of them. And you find in the church pastors, ministers of God doing exactly the same thing, not with government money, this time with church money. You may not say amen. Where they observe ministers who are trying to sell blessings in the church. If you have money in the church, you become a very important person. If you don't have money, not even the prophets you will receive. Worldly people, they observe Politicians, they observe. 
They can see we are not serious. You are wondering why people are not respecting the church. They don't. It's because they know they can manipulate us. If you bring an envelope of offering, the pastor will pray for you even when you should not pray. You may not say amen. Some of you have experienced that. You bring money to a pastor. He does not even ask, are you working? Where did you get it? He just says, stand kneel down here. Let's pray. Uh -uh. The spirit of God does not rest on people like that. But scripture says, he wrote feared John. Why? Knowing that he was a just and holy man. He protected him. He did not like him. You remember he was preaching to him. Hey! You have a wife you should not have. He wrote was touched. Ah, he said, John the Baptist. He arrested him, put him in prison, but he's protecting him. He knew that this man is telling the truth. It's this day. He feared him. He protected him so that his people should not kill him. He knew that he was a holy man. Observe these two things. First, Jesus said about John the Baptist, among all who were born of woman, there has never been a greater person than John the Baptist. John the Baptist, man of God, did not have a building. He was a pastor preaching in the wilderness. John the Baptist, he did not have a car. John the Baptist, he had no good food to eat. He was eating locusts and wild, how do you call that? Honey. John the Baptist did not have special cloth. No Gucci, no Versace. None of those things. Yet Jesus said, this is the greatest. Greater than Abraham. Greater than Isaac. Greater than Jacob. Greater than all the prophets before him. Today we think people are great. We even think they are blessed. Because of material things. I know you don't want to say amen. You see someone driving an Alaska. You say, why? Wow, he's blessed. Even those who are stealing. Doing illegal things. Because they have a material thing, you call them blessed. What a cursed generation. Brother, you want to get married? <laughs> they don't even want to know if you are born again. Yes. All they want to see, where do you work? What do you have? You can see the generation where we are. True spirituality in Christ means nothing. This is why other religions don't respect Christians anymore. Oh, come, I will pray for you. I will bless you. You will prosper. You will have money. Go and preach that to that Arab man in the Emirate who has plenty of money. He does not care to know about Jesus. He's richer than all your rich people combined. What kind of gospel? Or say, come, God will bless you. He'll give you money. It's a corrupt gospel. And many of you, that's what you run. Yet Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and it righteousness, it righteousness, it righteousness. Seek first. 
Jesus said, what will it serve a man for you to gain the whole world, yet you lose your soul? Salvation of your soul is more important than any material thing. A true child of God he does not serve God for the blessing he will get. He serves God for salvation of his own. If God blesses you with material thing, thank God for that. Jesus did not die on the cross for you to make money. John the Baptist came in the spirit and the power of Elijah. Elisha was also a carrier of the same spirit. Yet both men were holy men. You spend time. Where is the God of Elijah? Every day. Where is the God of Elijah? <laughs> I would say Elijah was a man like us. We only talk about prayer. But we don't talk about the holiness of Elijah. Where are the Elijahs of God? What do you think? What do you think Elijah, why he punished Israel for three years they did not have rain? It's because he saw Israel bowing before idols. They were worshipping idols. He said, you cannot do this. That the man, Elijah, and to prove his message of righteousness, he will call fire, fire will come down. He will pray, rain will not come. He prays again and rain comes. You are talking, where is the God of Elijah? That God of Elijah is a holy God. What made Elijah, Elijah, why he was so fiery? Is because he hated sin. You want the anointing of God to come upon you? Oh, Father, use me. Bless me. And you don't care about living right. Many people in churches will be surprised. When Christ comes, will be surprised. If he tarries and you die, Many of you will be surprised. You will be angry even against your pastors who did not preach the truth I'm preaching to you now. Because you'll be surprised. You thought you were going to heaven. Not realizing you were in a church just seated as at a reception, a waiting area to go to hellfire. When they tell you it is well with you, you are blessed. It is well with you. You are lying every day. It is well with you. You are fornicating every day. You are immoral every day. It is well with you. Just because you give money to church. Listen to me. I will say this again. I rather die poor. When God sent me to South Africa to Johannesburg here. Until now, there are people who think that this man, is he really normal? You notice for the last some years, I did not even go out of the country. If it was for money, material things, God Almighty is my witness. I would not be spending one week in Johannesburg. Salvation of men's soul is more important than any material thing. Than any material thing. I've been offered opportunities. Mm -hmm. That will not make me sit. But when I think that one day I have to stand before God, I cannot leave the work he has given me to do. I cannot stop preaching this message. If I'm telling you without holy 
silence. No man shall see God. The greatest of all judgment will start in the church. Because you know the truth. You hear the truth. You don't want to practice the truth. You want to walk with God. There is a sure way. That the way of holiness. And trust me. God pays very well. Yes. You can suffer a while. But he pays more than any human being. If you follow him with integrity from your heart, you will never regret it that you follow Jesus and the way of righteousness. But it is my responsibility today to explain to you, for some of you, it's not new. For others, it will bring more clarity. I have to explain to you what is a holiness. When we talk about holiness, what is holiness? Child of God, the Old Testament and the New Testament, although using different words in Hebrew and in Greek, Holiness or sanctification or practical righteousness is the same thing. To be holy is to be set apart. To be holy is to be set apart. But for you to understand this, let me give you four implications of what holiness means. Number one. When a person is holy. Is set apart. Is separated from sin. Number one. Take note of that. When a person. Is holy. Is separated from sin. This is why God cannot sin because he's holy. This is why Jesus Christ came walk on this earth. He lived without sin because he's holy. You cannot say you are holy or pursuing holiness if you are not separated from sin. Revelation chapter 18 verse 4. And I heard a voice from heaven. I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you shed in her sins unless you receive of her plagues. Come out. If you live holy, you separate yourself from sin. That sin can be in your life. That sin can be in the life of someone close to you. You separate yourself from it. Second Corinthians chapter 6 Verse 16 and verse 17, we continue. The Bible says, And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? You are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them. I will walk among them. I will be their God. They shall be my people. 17. Let's continue. Therefore, do what? Come out from among them and be separated, says the Lord. Don't touch 
what is unclean and I will receive you. Separation. Come out from among them and be separated. For God to walk with Abraham, he said to him, depart from your family. Because they were practicing idol worship. Holiness means separation from sin. Separation from sin. I read this verse yesterday. I did not finish. Let me read it for you. First John chapter 3 verse 8. Then I will read verse 9. Thank you spirit of the living God. He who sins is of who? He belongs to the devil. When you commit sin, you determine which camp you belong to. For this purpose, sorry, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Next verse. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him. He cannot sin because he has been born of God. What distinguishes those who belong to God and those who don't belong to God is not church attendance. It is separation from sin. Number two, when we talk about holiness, the second implication is consecration. Consecration to service. To service. Consecration. One is separation from sin. Secondly, consecration to service. You cannot say you are holy and you are not serving your God. Because the reason God wants you to separate is because he wants you to serve him. Isaiah 52, I believe verse 11. The Bible said, depart, depart, go out from there. Touch no unclean thing. Go out from the midst of her. Be clean. You who bear the vessels of God. You who serve God. Consecration to service is a very important component of holiness. Listen. You will read scripture, you will notice in the temple of Old Testament, there were vessels. And they were considered holy. But an instrument, a vessel, a pot, cannot commit sin. Why is it called holy? Is because... It is for service of God. Are you following me? A believer who is pursuing holiness is a person who does not only separate himself or herself from sin, but is a person who gives himself or herself into service for God. Can I hear amen? Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Paul says to the church of Rome, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present yourself, you present your body, a living sacrifice, notice, holy, acceptable to God, 
which is your reasonable service. You cannot separate holiness from service. Luke chapter 1 verse 74 and we read down. The Bible said to grant us that we being delivered from the hand of our enemies we might serve God him without fear. Next verse. How? In holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. You cannot separate holiness and service. Therefore, if you are a Christian, you must always be doing something for the glory of God. That's why every child of God is a minister of God. Because if you do not serve, you cannot be considered to be holy. Number three, purity of heart. Holiness. Holiness. Holiness also means a heart that is pure. If you don't understand the concept of purification of heart, you will become a hypocrite. This is why you find people, they say, yeah, everything they do is for appearance, but not the heart. True holiness is of the heart. Matthew chapter 5, verse 18, verse 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Now, take me to Psalm 24, verse 3 to verse 5. Listen to this one. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? Good question. Who may stand in his holy place? We sang here. The man of God led us here saying, This is holy ground. Who will stand? When Moses came to a holy ground, Although God wants to use him, say, Moses, remove your sandals. The place where you are is a holy ground. The sad thing in some religion, even Christian religion, when they go to their church or the place where they are congregating, they remove shoes. They leave outside and say, no, um, our sin is there. But you carry your heart inside. Your heart unclean, but you remove shoes. You know, one day, I was going to a place of prayer. I saw a mountain. After walking a distance, I said, ah, this is a place I can go and spend a day there praying. I went. Then I noticed, oh, there are there were some people singing some songs and praying. I said, okay, I don't mind them. Let them do what they're doing. I went as I was wearing shoes. I did not know. I passed there. Someone came, hey, 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 you cannot pass here wearing shoes. I said, huh? This is a bush. <laughs> okay, I just changed my direction. I went to where I was going. Don't just remove shoes. Remove the wickedness, the evil that is in the heart. Who may stand in his holy place? Verse 4. Listen. He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted his soul to an idol, nor sown deceitfully, Five, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord 
and righteousness from the God of his salvation. The fourth implication of holiness <laughs> is separation unto God. Listen. First was separation from sin. Then consecration to service. Then the three, purity of heart. Number four, now, separation unto who? To God. When you separate yourself from sin, understand you are separating yourself from sin to somebody. This is dedication. Serve me dedication. Let me explain this quickly. Very, very important. If you don't understand this, you can never live holy. Dedication, you give yourself. You know that you don't belong to yourself anymore. You belong to God. I'll give an example. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19, which is a very well-known scripture, the word of the Lord said, Oh, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is save my body say after me my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit now when you say your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit do you realize that that body does not belong to you anymore let's finish reading most of the time when you read this verse, we stop there. Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Who is in you? Whom you have from God? And those last words says, and you are not your own. You are not your own. But most of us, we think that we belong to ourselves. We can make our own decision. We can eat what we want. We can do whatever we want with our body. And people tell you, no, it's my body. God sees my heart. If you are a child of God, you are no longer yourself. You don't belong to yourself. Your mouth is not yours. In other words, you are not allowed to use that mouth to say what you want. Or you don't say amen. That's scripture. The moment you realize I don't belong to myself, I belong to God, everything changed. That dedication, because you know you don't belong to yourself, you cannot just go anywhere you want. The question will be, will Jesus go to this place? Will Jesus say what I'm saying? Huh? Will Jesus do what I'm doing? Because that body you think is yours. Sorry. If you are true a child of God, it's no longer yours. When you realize this, that you are not your own, your life change. But our biggest trouble, we think, yeah, I'm a Christian. It's my heart. You know my heart. Belong to God. Yes, I'm, I can do whatever. You see that body there? You are taking it to school. You are choosing your career. That body, that person belonged to Jesus. Will Jesus, did you ask him what career you should follow? Did you ask him when you take that decision, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that? Some of you are planning for 2025. Thank God. But did you ask the owner of the body, the owner of the soul, the owner of the spirit, what he thinks. A 
as long as you don't understand that you don't belong to yourself, you cannot live holy. In Galatians chapter 2 verse 20, Apostle Paul makes a powerful statement. He said, I have been crucified with Christ. Hello? I will ask you a question. When the Bible says, I have been crucified with Christ, you have been crucified with Christ. Did we go to the cross and die with him? Physically, did we go to Jerusalem on the cross, hang on the cross and die? No. I will explain to you as soon as I finish what I'm saying here. You'll understand that well. Because I've been crucified with Christ, he says, it is no longer I who live. It's no longer you. That life you are living is no longer yours. But Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live, not in the spirit, in this flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. When God says you are my people, it means you have no right to claim anything on your own. From the moment you became a Christian, you stopped being yourself. When you live the way you want, you talk the way you want, you go wherever you want, it shows you are not holy. And without holiness, no man sees God. When we talk about holiness, people only see sin. No, sin is even a smaller portion. A very small portion. That's why people struggle today with sin. Wake up, no. You know those New Year resolutions people make? This year, I will no longer do this. 15th of January. You have done it 15 times. Because you want to separate yourself from sin and you are not separated unto God. See, when you remove sin from your heart, who comes to dwell in that heart? The Bible says, if an unclean spirit goes out, he will go and wander, looking for a place he doesn't find. He said, I will return to my house. He calls it my house. When he found it empty, he comes and occupies it. Now imagine that a house is now the temple of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit dwells there. He controls the demonic spirit have no right to come back in. Do you understand where our holiness now comes from? When you allow the Holy Spirit to take over your body, your soul, and your spirit, the spirit of holiness, Holy Spirit, he will start producing his character, his behavior, his nature in you. And the Bible says we become partakers of divine nature. Can I hear men? I said yesterday here, the spirit of God is known as Holy Spirit. Yet he has many names we can call him. But we call him Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Child of God, listen to this. Have you realized that in this world we don't only have the Holy Spirit? 
they are also spirits that are called unclean spirit. <laughs> if you, you thought sin, you can overcome sin and live only on your own. No, it's impossible. That's why we are talking to you about the spirit of holiness. He must become the dweller of your heart. He must occupy that space that Satan was occupying. If you are the temple of the Holy Spirit, you don't belong to yourself. To live holy becomes easy. You don't force it. You just allow the Spirit of God to take control over you. You will not react to things the way you react. But if the Holy Spirit is not the one taking control, dwelling inside of you, another spirit will be there. An unclean spirit, he will make the whole place unclean. You, 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 you say, Apostle, I did not know that it's so easy to be holy. Yes. If you give yourself to him, you give him supremacy, authority, control, total control over your life, everything becomes easy. But as long as you have will of your own, you decide on your own, you do things on your own. You can't live holy. You see, your willpower, your willpower cannot help you to live holy. Do you remember Peter? Apostle Peter, man of God Peter. He said to Jesus, if I have to die with you, I will die. If I have to go to prison, I will go with you. He had a strong will. Some of you will think that if I just take decision to change, I will change. No, there are things that they are too powerful. It's not just human. It's not psychology. You need a spirit. Now, the kind of spirit who controls you determines who you become. That's why we are talking to you about the spirit of holiness. When it takes over you, your life will begin to change. Let me show you three scriptures and I close for tonight. Galatians chapter 5 verse 5. What the Bible says. Thank you Lord Jesus. Thank you spirit of holiness. For we, listen, for we through the spirit. Are you with me? We. Through who? Eagerly do what? For the hope of righteousness by faith. Righteousness by faith. That righteousness that we live in by faith is possible because of the Holy Spirit. Are you listening to me? If you have faith, you believe in Jesus, understand there is someone who will produce that righteousness inside of you. That the Holy Spirit. Somebody lift your hand. Say, Holy Spirit. I need you more. Romans 15, 16. In this church, everybody should know this verse. That I might be a minister, a servant of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles. Ministering the gospel of God that the offering of the Gentiles 
might be acceptable, sanctified. Listen, sanctified. Made holy by who? When you don't understand this, you will struggle. Our sanctification, our purification, the life of holiness that we desire to live will be produced in us through the Holy Spirit. Not another witness. I can give you another one. First Corinthians chapter 6, and I will end with this one. 9 to 11. This is what scripture says. Do you not know that the unrighteous, those who practice unrighteousness, will not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't be deceived. No one should lie to you, neither fornicators. No idolaters, no adulterers, no homosexuals, no sodomites, no thieves, no covetous, no drunkard, no revilers, no extortioners will. These people will not inherit the kingdom of God because they are living in sin. It's the Bible. I know you saw some words there. That even government around the world, they don't want you to, to speak about. The Bible says sodomite, homosexual. They will not inherit the kingdom of God. That the Bible. I believe God. I say, I believe God. Amen. Or you may not say amen. I believe God. <laughs> oh, apostle, don't you, you should not say that, you know, you know. It... Uh, uh, it's a hatred, you know, a hate speech. This is not hate speech. This is love speech. Why don't you have a problem when I say thieves must change? You don't have problem. Those who are corrupt, you must change. You don't have problem. When I say fornicators who are also immoral, you don't have problem. But when I say homosexuals should repent, why do you have a problem? No, I'm asking you a question. Why do you have problems? I did not write the Bible. I did not write the Bible. If God destroys Sodom and Gomorrah, and you, <laughs> me, um, this is uh, my orientation. Wh which orientation? Orientation to where? Oh, I understand you. It's orientation to somewhere. Under. Far from God. Not orientation to heaven. Even if you don't say amen. I will say it again. God did not create Adam to marry another Adam. Huh? Hey. Huh? Oh, you know I was born like this. Eh? We will tell you the truth. We love you. We will pray for you. You are telling God he made a mistake? Eh? Who are you? I'm asking the question, who are you to try to correct God? It is against nature. Let me finish my verse. Some of you say, ah, Apostle, finish. Uh, ah. You made a mistake to hear what I said. Because what I'm saying, these are the words of God. They will continue to work in your heart. You have no Power against the truth, and the truth shall set you free. They will not inherit the kingdom of God. Verse 11. And let me finish by this one.
Listen what Apostle Paul says to the church. He says, and such were some of you. In the past, you children of God, you are not like this. You were. But you were washed. I don't like the way I say that, man. You were like this, but you were washed. You were sanctified. You were made holy. But you were in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of by the Spirit of our God. You cannot be sanctified. You cannot be justified. You cannot be washed from sin without the help of the Holy Spirit. It is not possible for you to live according to the will of God without the Holy Spirit. And he comes when you believe in Jesus Christ. Because Jesus loves you. He died for your sins. He died for my sins. When you open your heart to Jesus in truth, the Holy Spirit comes in your heart and a change begins. Let's stand on our feet.